everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you want to receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hello, hello. Welcome everybody. Super excited to have everyone in here today. We are doing our fourth of four, four of four today. Um, and I'm just excited to paint. Um, I will be making a, I will be making a official post of this, um, official post of this probably either tomorrow or Wednesday. Um, but this is going to be the last paint live paint night for a few months because I have uh, I have some news um, but I kind of want to wait until I get more people in here um, to officially give the news but I'll probably do it during the like the live painting portion of it as one of the announcements um, but we are moving so that's exciting uh, but it takes a lot of time and energy to move, especially with three kids. So I won't have time to do any lives. Um, but obviously my patrons already know this, um, but I will be giving a full rundown. So if you want more information on that, there's a public post on my Patreon, as well as in a few days, um, if you follow my Facebook page, I'll be posting there. Um, and you can get more information on that specifically. But, Oh man, how is everyone? It is, we've had a couple heat waves here in San Diego and we've been using the air conditioning like almost every night, which we, we live in an apartment and we don't have like central air. Obviously we have like an air conditioning in the window and then we have another air conditioner out in the living room and we've been using them. <laughs> Let's just say that. It's been warm, but Unfortunately, I can't have it on during the classes because it makes way too much noise, but that's okay. But soon we will uh, be in a house that probably has central air and then we won't have to worry about that. So that'll be nice. Let me know um, who's here and if you're painting with anyone, where you're from. I always love hearing if anyone new is um, painting along with me or if it's just or if you're just hanging out and you're not painting that's fine too I had some time before class so I got my canvas ready beforehand so I originally had this class as a portrait but then I realized that my other three classes in this series including the Highland Cow, the Butterfly, and the and the uh, Chipmunk that I did on Friday, which I'll show you, um, were all landscape. And I was like, if I want to hang these all together, I can't have one portrait. So this is what we did on Friday. Look how cute he is. There you go. I think it's adorable. Um, but yeah, they're all portrait 
or they're all um, landscape. So I decided that I was going to do this one. I originally wanted it to do portrait because I feel like it fit the frame better, but I'm going to do mine landscape to fit so that I can like hang them all together. Uh, so with that, if you're a patron and you have a traceable, there's two different, um, it's going to be the same process, just in the portrait one, there's going to be less of the background that you're going to do. Um, so it's totally up to you how you want to do it. Um, but if you have an 11 by 14 canvas like I do, um, if you're going to do it portrait, you'll print out the 11 by 14 if you're doing it portrait. And if you're going to do it landscape, I would print out the, I printed out the smaller one, the 12 by, or the 9 by 12, and put that on my canvas. So I just felt like it fit better because then there was more of the owl to actually paint um, because it's landscape instead of portrait. And I feel like it fit it well. So that would be my suggestion um, if you're painting landscape. The other option is you can just freehand it. It's it, like it won't be too hard to freehand. I'll go over some of the basic shapes um, when we um, when I do it. Um, but yeah, it'll be it'll be good. Um, let's see. <sighs> It has been, I feel like it's been so slow the last two or three days because I can't, we can't really start packing for our move until after today and probably not until Wednesday. So I feel like these last few days have just gone so slow because I want to start packing, but I know I can't. <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, but it's fine. getting things ready. I don't even know what I told y'all, what colors I told y'all to get out. I do this, I think I do this every single time. <laughs> like I already got, I already got stuff out for me, but I just want to make sure that the things that I got out are the same <laughs> as, as what I told you to get out. Let's see. down. That's weird. I said burnt sienna and yellow. I wonder if that was for a different class and I just didn't update it. Um, I got an orange. You should get an orange. Um, raw umber. I didn't get out my red and my not just in case, but I ended up getting out. I guess you probably will need them. Um, but I also got out my blue just in case I want to like tint things a little bit more blue. Um, and if you need a reference, you can go to either my YouTube community, which is just go to my page and then click the community tab, um, or you can find the reference the reference photo on um, either my Patreon or just my regular Facebook page. Um, you'll just scroll down a few posts and it'll be there. So yeah, I need... I should do... Yeah. Um, let's see...
I think I have everything out. Yeah, I got the blue out just to tint it, but I don't think I'll really need. I don't think I'll need it. We will see. yesterday so I've been a little behind on um, some of my classes for my cobalt tier we've just um, for my cobalt tier I like to do zoom classes um, you kind of have to uh, kind of have your schedules meet up for that um, and we just keep missing each other um, and there's been just lack of communication through that so I've been a little behind so I've just started painting um, so that I can catch up on those classes and my husband was like you should do a new style instead of like the more realism because it's just a little bit more of the same and he wanted me to like branch out of my comfort zone and I definitely did that and I didn't really like it as much when I first finished it but when I came back to it like the next day like seeing it with fresh eyes I was like okay I like it now um, I will say that impressionism is really hard for me because it's like you have to, I really like painting details. I really like like matching the colors perfectly and um, going in there with a fine liner and getting every little detail that I can see. Um, I really enjoy doing that. Um, so impressionism is just like not that. <laughs> uh, so this is what I did um, with that tear. Sorry, there's glare. Um, but it's a little bit more impressionistic. And when I first did it, I was like, okay, I could see, I could see it. But seeing it with fresh eyes um, definitely helps. <laughs> definitely helps me enjoy it more. Um, and the colors are a little bit more brighter than what I just showed you. My colors were off, but um, that was, it was nice to come back to it and be like, oh, I actually like it now. <laughs> Hi, Tonya. Hi, Allison. Good to see you guys, or hear from you, I guess. Good to hear from you. <laughs> Glad you're here. Um... But yeah, I'm just, I'm excited to paint. Um, that's cool. I know how much realism is your thing. It's really impressive. Yes, it definitely is my thing. <laughs> and yeah. The glare is not helping it. Um, the colors pop, but. I tried to, like obviously it's a sunset sky with like clouds and stuff, but it's just like, it's so hard, it was so hard for me to 
step out of my comfort zone. So I get it when people are saying just like, oh, it's, I don't want to do it, but just, just do it and you'll thank yourself. And you might even learn that you like it better. Like for me, I know that I'm good at realism, so I like doing realism and I know that I'm not particularly, I feel like I didn't do a very good job, but I know that some people would do that and be like, oh man, that was really cool. It was really easy. I could do that all day. And that's their thing. That's great. Um, for me, it would take, it would probably take a couple more of those to get comfortable doing it, but I'm glad I did it. Um, I'm glad my husband pushed me out of my comfort zone. Sometimes you need someone else to push you. And that's what I am to you. I'm going to push you. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but that's also why I like doing all sorts of different um, mediums and classes because everybody likes something different and and it also gets those who haven't tried something else to try it um, but yeah lately I've definitely been on a blurry background and like something in the front that's more of a focus at least with these last at least with this series specifically but I've also felt like this series specifically is like flowers and an animal and that's like the focus so I, I think it's okay that that's what we're focusing on right now. Um, <laughs> thanks. Your hubby is a great support and inspiration. He is. He really is. He has supported me through this whole uh, online business endeavor and all my other endeavors to be frank. Um, yeah. Um, he was the one that initially actually pushed me to do stuff online because he could see that there was a part of me that kind of just died <laughs> when COVID started and I couldn't like do art anymore in person because um, for those of you who don't know, I was, I was a party artist. I would do paint nights and paint classes and I did face painting and parties and just all sorts of interactions. Extrovert art was like my thing. And that died when COVID hit. <laughs> so he's the one that pushed me and I'm really glad that he did. Um, could we do a waterfall with rocks maybe sometime? Yeah. Um, 100%. I think I actually... Before we figured out that I move, was moving, I had a few, um, I had a few classes under my belt that I, I do have a water a waterfall in my Patreon. It's called Waterfall Lagoon. Um, I think I only have that one though. I think that's the only waterfall that I've done. I think. But let's see. I had a few other, now I'm going to try to figure out where, where it is. Um, pictures for classes. See, I had an archive of things that I was going to do. One of them included an old church for Patreon, because I know you guys had Okay, I didn't have, I thought I had a waterfall in here, but I didn't. I'll have to put that on my list of things to do. Yeah, I'll have to put that on my list. You guys will have to remind me once we start getting back up into classes. Um, I feel like this move is like so far away, but at the same time, it's going to come very quick. Um, I'm deciding whether to paint along. I really, uh, I really got it and want to try out the focus background again. It's fun. I, I personally like having a blurry background. Um, and focus, but I also, like the, the Highland Cow, I would say is less blurred out. Like, like of the four, 
of the four, the Highland Cow was the least blurred out background because you could still see like sticks and trees in the background. It wasn't just all a big blur. Um, and then the the butterfly was probably the most blurred out background. Um, and this one I feel like is a little bit in between. So you have like the really the really blurred out background in the very back, but then there's like a bunch of flowers like closer to you. So we're kind of going to do a mix of both. Uh, is the butterfly? Yeah. Uh, I have a hard time with the blurriness of the background, like making it look good. I think doing it when it's wet is key to making it look smooth. Like you can do dry brush on background, but it's not necessarily, it has a different look to it, it has a different effect. Um, then, then if it's all blended perfectly while it's wet. Oops. Yeah, yes, Michael. I already showed them that. You want to see it? You want to see it through here? Yeah. That's what it looks like on camera. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, my God. husband's being a troll. <laughs> I should have just like shown him all the other things that were not that painting. Just troll him back. Michael is only used to Michael when he's in trouble from what I hear at least. I mean, or you're being a silly person <laughs> and you're not in trouble, I promise. But yeah, usually I do. I do. Say your full name. Just ready to paint. The next four minutes can't go fast enough. Uh, for those of he, for those of you who are here earlier, do you enjoy these talks? Because I'm thinking of in the future of just going straight into class. Maybe having like a five minute chit chat in the beginning of like our normal class, and then going into it instead of having like a 20 to 30 minute chat beforehand um, so let me know if you enjoy these enough to keep them or if you would rather just start and then like because theoretically not everybody can come early and they can just come when it starts and then we could chat with more people for that five minutes obviously I've enjoyed I enjoy the chit chat with my patrons because those are pretty much the only people who come early. <laughs> Yeah, I think I might. I also know that, I don't know, I don't even know if my husband knows this, but like having people, people who aren't here live and, and who like watch it back, skipping the first like 20 to 30 minutes of the video is like really, really bad for the algorithm. Algorithm. But like it is, 
and it's like then like YouTube is like oh people don't like this video and they stop showing it to people that's a thing so it's just something I was thinking of this week I was like oh I forgot that that was a thing um, it's just not conducive to anyways but I enjoy the classes or I enjoy the talks so I'm half tempted just to keep it and be like whatever <laughs> People who are here are here. I know, right? Dang algorithms. Yesterday I was, um, Mike and I were just laying in bed like before we went to sleep and stuff and he was like, what are you doing on your phone? I was like, I'm like prepping. He's like prepping what? I'm like, I'm prepping posts for the next two months while I'm on like a class hiatus while I'm like I'm prepping work so that my page isn't just like idle for the next like two months while we're you know while we're packing and moving because if there's like nothing going out on my page then that would be bad for the algorithm I'm just like dang algorithm <laughs> but it's fine I enjoy yeah we're really we're super excited I feel like there's so much to be excited for and like like the only thing I'm not excited for is the lack of Mexican food we went to Mike will have to chime in and say what it was because I don't remember the place but we went and got the most delicious tacos and quesadilla thing I wouldn't call it a quesadilla because it was like just taco filling on a quesadilla, but it was the most delicious thing I think I've ever tasted in Mexican food. I was just, it was so good. Was so good. Impressed with your planning and organization skills. Uh, yeah, you know, thanks. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm not very organized. <laughs> Um, yes, the Autobato was delicious. Um, yeah. Also, Mike, can you take over the TV for the kids? Because they're at my door. And we're about to start! Yay! <laughs> Alright, see you on the other side. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Samantha Anderson. I am a freelance artist and teacher hoping to inspire creativity. If you would like more videos like these, please take a second to like and subscribe down below. It really helps in the algorithm of YouTube to help get my videos seen to more people. If you wanna receive notifications of when I go live, please make sure to hit the bell and choose all notifications. If you have any questions during or after the class, make sure to pop a comment down below and I will answer it as soon as I can. I'll be leaving timestamps down below so you can skip ahead to the start of class, but I will be sharing announcements as well as supplies, so make sure to stick around for that. If interested in learning more about my classes, please follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and feel free to check me out on Patreon where I teach exclusive classes to those who support me. In Patreon, I also give traceables for all of my live classes, including this one. Lastly, if you would like to share your work after class with me and others who painted along with us, please head over to Facebook as I have an artist community where you can share your finished painting with us. I'll leave links for all of that in the description box below. Thanks for joining me and let's get started. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another Friday. No, it's not Friday tutorial. It is a live class. Um, I am so excited to finally paint. Um, this is a, this is the last, uh, this is the last class of our animal and flower series of this month. So I'm super excited to finish this out and then have like a little set of four. Um, in the beginning when I initially made this class, it was going to be a portrait. Um, but in the midst of doing all of the other ones that are all landscape and I know like I know that I, I want to put them all together 
I can't have one that's portrait. So the traceables that I do have are for portrait. So this is the bigger one for the 11 by 14. And then this one is technically for the, uh, for the nine by 12. But if you're painting on 11 by 14 and you want to make it the same landscape as mine, print out the nine by 12 and that fits perfectly in this area okay that's a little hack that you can use uh, for this specific class if you're using a different size canvas obviously uh, you can if you are a patron you can always message me and I will I'll shrink it down I'll figure it out um, and I can just re-upload that to the um, to that post in patreon so if you're using a different type of canvas and you want me to obviously it's, it's going to be after the live class um, but just let me know shoot me a message or comment on that post asking if I, you can have like another size and i'll just it's super easy to whip up so just let me know um but right now this is what we're doing so i'm going to be i'm going to be doing this in landscape but if you want to do it in portrait you are totally um totally do that i would just you know, put him about there. Have a little bit more space on this side and put his wing pretty much like in the corner and you can have flowers kind of coming out, okay? Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and go over supplies first and then we will, we will get painting. Um, I have right here a 11 by 14 canvas. This is a stretch canvas from Fredericks. They gave me a bunch of boxes um, like the beginning of the year and I'm still working through them. I think I'm on my last box and it's been great to have these um, because I haven't, I haven't had to buy any and they're really good quality. So that's been super nice. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Is there a fan going towards the mic? It sounds like there's a lot of boomy sound. Mm. I do not have any fans on other than my normal fan and that's I usually have that one on and if I turn that one off I will roast in here <laughs> so so um I don't know what that would be there was there were people working out in the um at the fire station so that might be that might be it um, okay, so I have my 11 by 14. Uh, you can use any size for this. It doesn't have to be 11 by 14. You could even do it a square if you wanted to, obviously, or a portrait, like we said. Um, and then I have my water, paper towel, palette, an array of brushes. I'll tell you what I'm using when I'm using it. I will probably use mostly my Filbert. Everybody knows uh, who's been painting with me. I love my Filberts. Uh, so I'll probably be using my big one. Um, for the background and then my smaller one for a lot of the details. Um, for the flowers, you can kind of decide whether or not you want to use a filbert or like a square brush, depending on how what like the look of flowers that you want. Uh, so that's totally up to you. Um, as for the background, anything else that you might need, like you could use a sponge if you wanted to do that in the background uh, for the blurriness, but um, uh, sorry, couldn't find the traceable. The traceable is in a pinned post, but I can also repost it if you want. Um, uh, yeah, so brushes, I will just kind of tell you. Other than that, I will probably use maybe like a liner brush. I think that's probably all I'm going to use. Maybe a detail brush, but again, I'll let you know what I'm using when I'm using it. And then I have a palette knife for, uh, for mixing and then acrylic paint. Let's go over colors real fast. In the description, I have my black and my white, my raw umber, and then yellow and green. I have no idea why I didn't put my orange on that list. That seems silly. I didn't even put red on there when I hit the table oh that makes sense yeah my mic is connected to my um, to my desk which if I if 
if I hit my desk, then it hits my mic. Um, and then I also, um, there's a little bit hints of blue at the very top. If you don't care about putting blue in there, then you don't have to have it. But I also got a, um, got an ultramarine blue out. And I think that is all. Yeah, I have no idea why I didn't put orange <laughs> on my, on my list. That's silly, silly. Um, I did put raw sienna on there so if you would like to get out raw sienna you can um but you can also make raw sienna with just like your orange and your brown too so i don't necessarily think that it's necessary i think i don't necessarily that's a lot of necessaries um i think that list was probably from a previous class that i just didn't edit so apologies um i will fix it when we're done with this class Let's see, I think that is all of the supplies. Let me go over a few announcements real fast. Um, we did a Friday tutorial in Patreon, which was really fun. Um, it was number three of this class, of this series. And here, let me just put it here. This is how he came out. Look at this little guy, isn't he cute? I'm really excited. I've loved how all of these animal and flowers have come out, which is why I also think that I'm just going to keep them all and not sell them because they're cute. And maybe I'll put them in like the kids room or something like that because my kids love animals um, and then I can keep them. Um, but yeah, so this guy came out super cute. Um, and that was number three of four. And we're doing four of four today. So two of them are in my Patreon and two of them are in my um, live class archive on YouTube. And the other thing I did yesterday, which some of you will already seen it on, um, on Patreon, but I did this one for my Cobalt tier, which is the highest tier. They get specific classes um, uh, just for them. Like they get to choose it all. Um, usually we do them um, via Zoom, but lately it's just been like a normal Friday tutorial, but only for Cobalt's because, um, just lack of, um, lack of being able to like meet our schedules. Um, so yeah, I have one more of those before I'm all done. And then my last announcement, I will be announcing this on Facebook and all my patrons already know this, but I am moving. We are moving, so we are in a small apartment right now, and we get to move into a house in um, in a different town. So we are packing up and skipping town. But um, with that, there's going to be about roughly a two month kind of hiatus time where I'm not putting out classes either in my Patreon or my live uh, or on um, live on YouTube. So that means that you can catch up on all the other classes in my Patreon and um, on my YouTube. Um, but it also means that in my Patreon, I will be pausing my Patreon. And that just means that you will, um, all patrons will re remain patrons and they're just going to get a free two months of access. Um, they're not going to be charged on the first so if you want if you've been wanting to try my patreon and you want to get essentially a month free or it could be longer i'm not sure i at least two months so you pay for one you'll get the second one free essentially um feel free to do that now's the time to take advantage of my pause patreon <laughs> um but yeah i will super be i would be grateful um for any extra patrons who decide to join because of it um yeah, I think, let's see, I think that's all of my announcements. Let me know if you have any questions going forward. Um, yes, Allison, I will be doing a rough outline sketch. Um, even though I already have mine here, I'm going to kind of go over what that would look like if you did not have, if you don't have the, um, the traceable, okay? So let's go ahead and... I'm going to do mine in like a yellow, a yellowish white. Um, actually I would say, so what I would say is if you've already done your 
sketch, then you can just outline it in black because we're going to outline it in black and cover all the lines in a dark color so that when we do the background, we'll be able to see that color through. For anyone who has not done it, we're going to do it in a yellow white um, so that you can mess up and then cover it and then go over the lines with black like normal. So I'm gonna grab my, just my liner brush. Actually, I'm just gonna grab a normal, just a normal round brush. I'm going to mix this together. And hopefully you can see this. Essentially, the first thing I'm going to do is figure out where I want the head. So in this painting, it's gonna be on the right side of the quadrant and it's gonna be in like the lower corner of the upper right one. So that's kind of um, kind of the section. So if you wanna put a dot and then do a circle around that, you can. However, you want to do like a circle, but this is like the main, uh, this is the main shape. I'm just doing the main shapes. So anyone who's already done their uh, sketch or already has that, just go ahead and outline it um, in your black and you can skip this step. This is just for people who have not drawn it on. So you're gonna do your circle and I'm gonna make mine just a tad bit, um, a tad bit darker so you can see it. I'm gonna add just a little bit of orange in mine. Whenever you're, whenever you're putting on, like you're kind of drawing something on, the paint only needs to be as dark as what you can see it. It doesn't need to be any darker than that. Mine has to be a little bit darker so that you can see it on the camera because sometimes, sometimes you can't really see things on the camera. All right, so now this owl is looking to the, to the right a little bit. So if you kind of do like a, if you're like doing like a face like this, like an X on the face, but it's kind of like pulled over a little bit and rounded down. So just try to think of it in like a circular motion. That's where the head is at. Then for the belly, you're gonna come down. You're gonna come off of this side. You're gonna go down, straight down. And then you're gonna come out for his belly and come around. Until you hit about, you know, just, just above that. And you're gonna do the same thing on the side. You're gonna come straight down and then go out. And if you were to go straight down off of this side, you're gonna hit the top of his shoulder, the top of his wing that starts about the bottom of his face. You see that? So the bottom of his face, if you go straight over, that's where the top of his, ooh, it's a bug. That's where the top of his um, wing is. And you're just gonna pull that down. And just roughly kind of just sketch it in like that and then note that his eye is sunken in so his nose comes out and I'm gonna do the rest of this in black um, His nose comes out, it's like a little V. And then his little beak. And then his eye is right next to it.
So once you kind of have all of your, um, once you have your your shapes and everything that you like, you can go back in with your black and it's almost like drawing in pencil and then inking in black. That's essentially what we're doing. Hopefully that was helpful for anyone who um, didn't have the traceable. I think this even comes down further. And then this little heart shape comes right where that um, that middle piece is. Like so. So hopefully all of that is helpful for anyone who didn't have the traceable. Um, okay, let's go ahead and mix our colors. Um, we're going to start off with the background, which has kind of got this like grays, dark colors. I feel like there's like a tint of like purpley blue in there, but I could be wrong. Um, it all kind of depends on the colors that you want to put in there. I also feel like this might be coming down a little further. Okay. Alright, um, I'm going to grab my white, my black, which I already have some black on here. I'm going to have a good amount. I'm going to make two to three different, um, two to three different shades and then we'll go from there. So I have my main white and I'm just going to put in some of this black and see where it takes me and see if that's going to be a medium or a light black gray. Okay, so I think I'm going to go a little darker on this. And this is going to probably be my lighter color. It's not very often that I mix gray, but gray is like the one color that like it's really hard to see on this um, on this palette. Um, and then I'm also going to get out my blue and my brown just to help tint the background colors. So I'm going to get a little bit of brown and like a touch of blue. Maybe I'll even get out my green. I think I'm gonna leave the green for the for the um, 
for the front part. I feel like that's a pretty good gray. You probably wouldn't even tell that there's blue and gray, but it does tint it a little bit of a cooler. Um, uh, so I didn't notice a blue which color. So I put um, I put ultramarine blue in it. And like I said, if you if you didn't know it was in there, you probably wouldn't say, "Oh, that's got blue and brown in it." But this next to just black and white, it is going to be that kind of cooler um, color in comparison. So now I'm going to make a darker gray. I'm going to need a little bit more black. And I'm just going to mix this into the white. I'm going to go a little bit darker. I'm also going to put some brown in it. Almost like it's a really, really dirty dark brown. I like that. still gray, but all right, I think these are the colors I'm going to go with. I'm going to also make the kind of creamy color that's in here and then the greenish gray color that's in here. Uh, and that'll just be easier to mix all together when it's all wet and I'm continually going down rather than doing the sky and then making the color because by the time I get back to the sky that's going to be dry and it'll be harder to blend those two together. So. We're just going to right off the bat make these colors. They won't dry on our on our palette by the time we're done. So better to make them now. I'm going to do white, a tiny bit of yellow, and some orange. should say some yellow and a tiny bit of orange. And I think I need more yellow and more white and I think I almost I'm going to add a tiny bit of brown. Because it needs to be dulled down. It's a little bit too bright. The brightest colors that I want in this painting are going to be those front flowers. Everything in the background is going to be, as you can see, the background's fairly dull. And those are probably like dark green trees. Um, so everything that's not in the front, you're going to want to dull down a bit. So I'm going to take just a little bit, start very small because white and yellow are very easily tinted. So I'm just going to add just the tiniest bit of this brown. And I think that did the trick. I need a little bit more orange though.
We're going for a very muted, like, dull orange. Dull orangey yellow. Okay, I think I probably have something I like. It's like a it's like a orangey tannish, and we can add kind of white in there. Um, and then we're gonna add we're gonna do like a kind of grayish green brown. So you can probably guess, um, I have a creamy dull orangey kind of brown peachy tan. Nailed it. <laughs> That's pretty much what I have too. I like it. This is my creamy dull orangey kind of brown <laughs> peachy tan. That's funny. Um... <laughs> I'm going to take um, some of this white because our base for this color is going to be gray. So I'm going to take this white and a little bit of this black, maybe a tiny bit of brown, and then some green. I think I have the color, it just needs to be darker. So I'm gonna grab some more black. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm gonna always add some of this darker grayish in there. All right, so now that we have our colors, so again, I have my dark gray, which has white, black, brown, and blue. I have my light gray, which has the same colors, but just different amounts of them, more white. Um, I, have my, <laughs> I have my creamy dull orange, kind of brown, peachy tan. I'm just gonna say light orange for the sake of <laughs> trying to memorize that color. And then I have my light green, okay? Um, so dark gray, light gray, orange, and green. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and start painting. We did it guys. All right. Um, let's see, I'm going to bring this closer to me so you can see all the colors. Uh, let's, I'm going to start, I'm going to start just by painting the top of this. I'm going to grab just a little bit of water just to help it move. start with the 
lighter gray in the middle. And go to my sort of darker gray. In the middle area, I kind of just got some of the darker gray, but kind of mixed it with the lighter gray. So there's almost like a in between. And I'm going to go full blown dark gray on this side. And you can blend it. I would say blend a little less um, on here on this side because it is a little bit more of like there's like a little bit more of a tree on that side. So I'm just painting the side so I don't forget. And I'm just going to go down to about here about mid face you can go in little circles or however However um, blended you want it to be. Let's see, I'm going to add some dark over here as well. medium mid midway down and I'm gonna kind of as I go down I'm going to work in some of this lighter gray and again you can go like in circles you can do the crisscross motion I've taught that a bunch lately just going back and forth I'm gonna actually get out my white to lighten it up a little bit And just work that in, little circles. It's funny, because of this glare, I literally just can't see what I'm painting. I only see it because I get to, I get to see the camera and what I see on there, but unless I pull it down. I can, like, can't really even see what I'm doing. But while this is all wet, this is the time to add your different, your different colors and your different, um, background colors you can lighten certain parts up by just adding a little bit of white and then blending it in like I just did I'll do it again right here get your white and you're just gonna go in little little circles and just blend it out okay. 
You can always come back in with some dark. Just keep moving your brush and blend it in, blend it out, shake it all about. So that's pretty much the background. I'm going to, or the, the sky background. I'm going to rinse out my brush. I'm going to just try to blend out this bottom section real fast. Just so that when I come back in with this lighter color, I'm going to first just put it on I'm going to do this left side first because I know that it's still wet. And I'm just wiggling my brush across. As you can see, I'm just slowly moving down and then I can come back in and blend this area. So for instance, I'm gonna come back over here and put more of this in. I can put in like an inch, about an inch. And then once I get that inch in, I haven't really touched this blending part. I'm just going to move up with my brush and blend it in and I think I'm gonna go in with just a tiny bit of white rinse out my brush get a tiny bit of white just to help that blend in And there's going to be flowers all over here. So if you get like a little like, if you're like, oh, there's like an orange spot in the middle of here, that's okay. You can just blend it in like, oh no, there's an orange spot right there. You can just blend it in, in that spot, maybe move it around. Like at this point, it's not just the background. It's also the things that are behind the, um, the owl. So I'm just going to blend those in. And if you do something that you don't like, like say I don't like this part, I'm going to just come back over it with that same gray and work that back in. Like that. I'm 
I'm going to keep working my way down. And maybe into a little bit of this green down here. And it does not have to be perfectly blended. Like, this is one of those things where it's like backgrounds like this, where there's going to be layers on it. Like, don't worry about it being perfectly blended. This one is a little bit easier than the butterfly that we did because with the butterfly, there wasn't really going to be any other layers over that. It was just as is. Here, there's going to be a ton of, like, flowers and other things on it. Um, so, don't worry about it. I'm just going to blend that section up. And the only thing that I'm really looking for in these two sections is to make sure that like it's roughly the same like gradient. Um, like the green roughly starts about halfway. And if you run out of green, put orange. There also is like a tail underneath here. Um, so just, you know, keep that in mind. I don't think it was on, it wasn't on the, um, the traceable and I forgot to mention it earlier.
behind. So there's that. And while all that dries, we're gonna go ahead and do a first coat of white or like a whitish tan um, on our on our um, owl. I have a bit of an off-white. I just mixed some of the residue orange with some white. And I'm gonna use this time to go over and outline where this is. And this owl has a slightly flat top to the head. So it's not completely round. I am going over my black lines because as you can see, you can you can see them through. Um, you can see it through that. So I'm just going over. to get that first coat of white on there. I'm going to rinse out my brush and we're going to make almost like there's like try to picture these flowers in like three different stages like there's the back orange which is like the dullest of it and the lightest then it, there's like one stage further where it's a little bit darker a little bit brighter um, it's kind of like these mid ones and then there's like the front ones which are all color and a little bit more crisp so we're gonna make that kind of 
medium tier color. So I have white, yellow, orange, and like a tiny bit of brown. Because those are the colors that we used before. We're just going to need a little bit different amounts of them. And if it's too pea if it's very if it's peach, then you're gonna need a little bit more yellow. Maybe a little bit more yellow and like less white, so just like more color. So more like yellow and orange. I think. Okay, I think that color goes well. Um, so if you didn't see, I just put like at the tiniest bit on the canvas to see if the colors kind of like match up. So it's just a more saturated color. So I'm going to take my filbert, my small filbert. And just with a dry brush, I'm just going to put some of these in the background. So you can have them all different sizes. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of just creating like a like a half moon and then creating some texture on top so it looks like there's like some flowers. You can also create just like round ones like maybe they're maybe they're not quite open. Just make sure that some of them like are like overlapping and they're not like all perfectly spaced. Remember that this is going to be in layers. Now some of these are just a little bit closer, maybe a little bit bigger. So I still have a, I still have a, um, a 
dry brush and I'm being more blunt on the top and then I'm just kind of blending out the bottom. So I grab some paint, I focus on the top and then with whatever's left I just blend out the bottom. See that? Maybe there's a couple small ones in here. That maybe aren't as blended. I miss a couple small ones that are blended. A couple other ones in here that are close closer to the other ones and make sure that like they're not all perfectly spaced they're going to be overlapping each other I'm going to do this side now Remember, we still have one or two more layers. That's a really, really good start. I'm going to go ahead and let's work on our owl and we'll get those in and then we can brighten up some of these um, some of these flowers okay that's a really good start um, let's go ahead and make our light brownish color so we have white and then we're going to have like a slightly off white. I'm going to take some of this dark gray and mix it into that. Maybe a tad bit more of a brown. And that will be dark enough. We want to we start getting just where the shades are and then we can put in 
the details after. I'm going to take some of this gray and put it here. I'm going to always make things lighter by coming over it with white, but sometimes we need that dark to shine through um, first. And then we can come back over it with that dark. I'm going to go in with just this dark gray and do the tail. And then let's see. I'm gonna take my my whitish And when I'm doing this, I'm going to try to keep in the downward motion. Like I'm, for instance, I'm not gonna go side to side because that's not really where the feathers, the direction of the feathers go. I'm gonna come behind here and put in this dark color. And again, this doesn't have to be the ending color. We just have to have something there so that our light can show through. Because we're going to come and put on just very plain white. And if it's white to start off with, then that won't show or right, it'll be putting white on white and there won't be any um, there won't be any difference I am gonna go with white
Everybody still tracking with me? Put white all the way around the head. The, the head is pretty white. And then I'm also going to whiten up the inside of the face. continuing to put white in the face because there's not much variance in the face other than a little bit of you know brown next to the eyes I'm going to go ahead and put in the, the eyes since I'm doing the head right now. So I'm just going to come in with my black. start with just like a little section and you can always make it bigger even though I already like drew these in I'm still I'm still putting in like just a little bit at a time so that I can kind of just like adjust as I go And then I can grab a little bit of this brown and mix it with a little bit of white. And I can start adding just a little bit of this um, just that little line. I can start adding little um, like feathery parts to it.
I might even come in with a a um, fan brush and give some texture on the top. This is actually very useful for creating some textures. And if you don't have a, um, if you don't have one of these brushes, that's okay. You can just keep using like a small brush. continue this kind of feathering texture around the around the, the head the circle and just around that face and I went all the way around even though the pictures not completely like that and you can always come back and like add white over it I'm gonna add some shading with the fan brush almost like adding some eye um, some eyeshadow. I have barely any paint on my brush. So when I'm doing that, it's barely even showing. going to add a tiny bit more of this brown to the inner eyes right here and then I'm also going to add a nose, a little beak I'm going to switch to a smaller brush to finish this and for the colors I'm using kind of like a darker gray or darker brown on the very tip and then I go to a darker color or sorry a lighter color when I get up further
and then you can add your white um, I almost said fur it's not fur they're like really small feathers on top of that I'm going to work on the wing now. I'm going to grab some white, go down the left side of the wing with that. And then I'm actually going to switch to like a brown and gray combo. So I'm mixing brown with some gray. You want it to be more brown than gray, but it is fairly dark. I'm just going to add that to this section. And then I'm going to go back in with just my white and try to blend that in a little bit, just at the top. You can maybe even take a cleaner brush And just like we blended the top here, you can blend it down. Maybe I can go in with some more white. There's even some white down here that you can try to put in while it's wet 
um, or you can come back after it's dried a little bit and you can add that white later. It's all up to you and how you like to work. If you like to work wet on wet or for blending this type of thing, if you would rather wait till it dried. I'm just adding little streaks of white here and there. Because that's kind of how owls are. Alright, now I'm going to take my white and there's kind of like this uh, bushy going down here on the very top coming just from this section. There's a lot of white right there, right where the neck is. And then there's also this little tuft right here and that kind of goes out like a like a a like a upside down v some goes this way and it's kind of just some get some more traction right there and then there's another white spell like up here there's a little white or sorry down here on the front part of the leg And on the very edges of it, you can go out a little bit so that it is kind of fuzzy. The leg fur, or the leg, uh, the not fur, um, feathers are a little bit uh, less neat. And if you're having troubles getting like bright white, try to add water, just a tiny bit of water to it. And then I'll make it go on the canvas just a little bit better, easier. And it will go on a little bit more saturated. And again, I'm just using my Filbert brush for this.
take my gray and just add a little bit of a under like an under eye gloss almost and then on top and I use the gray instead of white because I don't want it even in the picture it, you can barely see it so I don't want it to be too vibrant So I used this lighter gray. All right, I'm gonna add a few dots of white to the wing. I'm going to use my fan brush to do a bit more dots in this in this lighter area up by his shoulder just to add a little bit more texture. I also did like a tiny tiny bit of um, speckling with my toothbrush. But then I, I am going to come back over with just my plain dot. I did speckle. I speckled a little bit. Not too much though. I speckled and then I used um, my fan brush just in this area right here to add a little bit of extra. I just added a few different lines here and there just to give it the illusion that there's a lot of different feathers like that you can't really make out but there are feathers going on here there's lots of feathers
And some of this will be behind some, um, some flowers anyways. So, um, but we do have, so I think I'm done with my, my owl. I think he looks really good. Um, I will say that I forgot to do the bottom. So I'm just going to do that real quick. Just grab some white. just putting in a slightly darker shadow right here. I just felt like it wasn't as dark as it could be. But I think I think we're good. I think I like it. Alright. Um, let's go ahead and still have some of this orange so I'm going to grab more orange and more yellow and make it even more potent potent is not the word more saturated there we go potent in its color I think I was thinking flowers and like smelling flowers <laughs> that doesn't really make sense for <laughs> color does it Okay, um, so I'm going to grab my filbert back and just grab some of this color and this time I'm going to be a little bit more, um, like intentional with some of these flowers. I think these flowers are also just a tad bit more yellow. So I'm going to add some more yellow to my I'm just taking that brush and I'm going to put in some big ones, okay? And I want you to think of like when you have a flower that does this and you tilt it up, it's flower like the petals are going to, you're going to see the ones going out are going to be shorter. Like my pinky is going to be shorter than the one going this way because you can't like, it's the viewpoint. So when you do ones out here, let me see if I can. So for instance, this one, I'm going to do two long ones and then as we come around, it's going to be more like bowl shaped. There's a couple little ones. And I love this flower out here, so I'm just going to put one out here. I love the flower by his head. I 
and you can do five or six or more And then very bravely put a few in front of the um, the owl. And if there's any very any part of the owl that you don't like, cover it up. And then as you, you can, a couple of these can be a little bit more in the background with a little bit less detail. I feel like there's a couple more right here. Alright, then I'm going to come in with my white and this orange. And I'm going to Put in some light edges. And I'm trying to focus on like what like the sun would be catching. So if if one of these is like turned away, then the sun would be catching it on like the other side of it. And then there's going to be like other other ones where like other petals that are like covering the center.
and then on some of them you can put like a slightly darker center And now I'm going to get my gray and mix it with some of this green. Maybe grab some white to lighten it up a little bit. I'm going to give some of these stems. Obviously, you don't have to give them all stems. Um, this is where I'm going to get my liner brush out so I can be a little smaller with my strokes. And we can start adding other like stems and sticks in here.
right now I'm going to take some of this gray and I'm going to start putting in this like there's like this other plant in here um, that is I'm guessing it's some sort of I mean it's probably probably part of the plant um, but I'm going to put a couple of these in here. So I'm going to get my dark gray. I'm just going to take my filbert and make a bunch of little V's. I'm going to do one more over here. Maybe we'll do one down here too. put in a couple ones in the background that maybe aren't as they're just like suggestions of them At this point I'm just adding texture with just a little bit on my brush. I'm just adding some lines here and there to the background. I think that's probably it. I might add like a tiny bit of this green to the top of this one. That is pretty much it. I'm sure that I could go for ages on just the detail, but I'm trying not to <laughs> have
have three hour uh three hour long classes and i'm sure my husband also uh appreciates that because he's looking after the kids but um that being said thank you so much for joining me i really liked this one i think that the three of them together is a really fun trio got some white up here i'm just gonna um but yeah that is exciting i'm glad that they're all done and um yeah thank you so much for joining me i'm now finding all these little things that i want to fix i'm going to just do the bottom real fast it's kind of bare on the bottom Now we're good. But yeah. Thank you so much for joining me. And I want to say I'll see you in the next one. Um, but with that said, I don't know when our next one's going to be. Um, it'll probably be in, let's see, June, July, August, September, I want to say. I. It just all depends on how fast we get moved in and I get my setup all, you know, organized. Um, I, we're supposed to be moving in the like 17th, 18th of July. So, um, I'll probably have something in August, but I, I gave myself two months. <laughs> I gave myself two months, um, to really just focus on my family and, um, I might just take that so um, but yeah let us uh, let me know what else you'd like to paint for our next if you liked doing a series of you know four classes um, I might do that in the future as well um, but definitely let me know if you liked this one and um, yeah uh, we miss you let us know how you do it yes I will let I will definitely let my patrons know um, how I'm doing and how everything's going and I will probably give you updates along the way um I don't know how much of an update I will be giving to um the rest of the world um so if you want to be in the know <laughs> um I'll be updating my Patreon um fairly fairly often so um but yeah I'm gonna go ahead and sign mine and uh put it on the website or on um Facebook let me grab that link for you. If you are not a part of our Facebook community, uh, please go to the link below. Um, I'm going to post that right now and share your work. I would love to see it and I can't wait. Um, I can't wait to see it. So uh, there is that. Thank you so much for joining me and we will hopefully see you soon. Bye guys.